Hi, I'm here with... Fred Tatashore. Now, Fred, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and what you've done? Well, I, I'm primarily known as a voice actor, and I play Hulk, uh, and for, well, a lot of Marvel stuff. Good guy in uh, Marvel and bad guy in DC for some reason. It seems <laughs> to work out like that. Uh, <clears throat> but Hulk, Beast, and Thing, and uh, uh, Bane, and... Uh, for Overwatch, uh, Soldier 76 has been uh, no! a thing, yes. For Fortnite, I'm Lars, man. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, for uh, StarCraft too. I was, I was Sarah Tool for many years. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I work on uh, different animated shows, Family Guy, American Dad. A uh, lot of the, well, I guess we're here at the E3 convention, yeah. so we're focusing on games, right? So, so uh, <laughs> Yeah, I have Gears of War, Baird, one of the ah, things yeah. I've, I've loved playing over the years. I am Nikolai on the Call of Duty, uh, <laughs> and, and a few others, you know. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Um, I was talking to my colleague Colin here, and he was just like, scroll, stop, you know, the scrolls. I was like, yes, I know. Right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Um, so you not only have done voice acting for video games, but you've also done it um, for like animation. Oh yeah, that's you my saw, main thing. Um, um, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank at it. The puppet movie South Park made. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, um, um, team, uh, team America. Team America. <laughs> Sorry, I got daddy brain. I'm like, uh, 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 yeah, Team America. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, I mean, that's Man. like iconic movie. So the- much fun. Those guys are, they, Matt and Trey, they, such great guys to work for. They're just like, they did the best audience you could ever have, you know? Uh, yeah. How did that all come to be when you decided that you wanted to uh, pursue a career in voice acting? Oh, well, for me, it was all. Always, I've always been into it. Like I've always been into voices. Always been into cartoons, animation, comic books. I'm a fan, so it's kind of. A, uh, it didn't just happen one day. I was just. I've always been like doing impersonations, and my dad had it at the time. Back in the Civil War, we had a thing called a tape recorder. It was a ribbon. No, and and, it, and uh, I would. My dad had this recorder, and I would make little shows. Either oh, either so he loaned it to me or I stole it from him. I think I think he loaned it to me. Yeah, he, he with his blessing. Let's bussing. go with that. Yeah, <laughs> and he. Uh, <laughs> I'll straight it. I'll see him tonight. I'll, I'll find out. But uh, yeah, recording. Um, and uh, I would make little shows, do voices, uh-huh. do this thing, and then um, as I got into school, I was a trouble. Not troublemaker. I was really shy. Mm. I was cripplingly shy and so I would always love to make up voices and play be other people you know so that got me into theater you know in school and then that got me into doing stand-up comedy which is really how I got my start and got into that got did into that help, uh, I'm sorry no no go ahead did that help break like your, uh, your anxiety oh yeah yeah as you did actually and then I got into college I kind of got out of that out of the shyness thing mm-hmm. you know and, and kind of like oh it can be silly and fun and you know but uh, I, you know, the, like a lot of us, you know, you grow up like this gray blob wanting to be something and not knowing what you're going to be or wanted to, you know, it's always easier to wear a mask, that is do a voice. Good. And that's kind of what this was for me. And then it became like, hey, I can do this and people might laugh and we can do it on stage and be crazy. And, and so stand up and that got into improv comedy and music. And then I just studied theater, uh, classical theater. You know, you told me all the... Get, lost so much, so much of the games that I'm working on today it was all the classical training, like theater. I would be like, really? You know, Pac-Man, come hither. You must eat the eyeballs before going through the center of the labyrinth. No, like I would never know that that would have been a thing. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, and all along, I was an, uh, like to draw, so I was an animator. I went to school for both theater and animation at UCLA. And thank you for that. Yeah, it was oh yeah, you know, uh, it was a blast. If I'm not uh, mistaken, um, I heard animation help get your foot in the door a little bit more in the uh, industry. Oh sure, sure. You know, just just learning, just because I would be doing uh, my film or other people's films. Uh-huh. You know, uh, my friend, my best friend, uh, Devin. Uh, you know, Yuzan, who I went to school with. Uh, you know, we would make these films. We still do. Uh, and I would uh, loan my voice to these things and uh, student films, and then that gets scene and then you start to have a reel you know and I had never realized like I always wanted to do this voice acting but I never realized like that was a thing that was like oh that could be your living you know like that could be your life and um so I still animate but that was like the voice acting thing became a a, a really big deal uh 
and it did it did help just going to festivals and you know getting your stuff out there and uh, I love it I just I, I can't say enough good things about the doing it you know and again working on the games is just incredible because they go so deep now uh, one thing that we were talking about well, you guys you, you guys were talking about before the interview started it was like how you saw like the world just change and like it's it's moving in such a progressive way yes you love that and um one one thing uh you're the voice of Soldier 76. Soldier 76 reporting for duty, sir. Oh, wait, that's my favorite character. I made him. Oh, you're time. kidding. I'm a soldier man. Are you really? Yeah. Congratulations, soldier. Do you have a favorite skin? What is it? Um, I like the uh, the Daredevil one. You do like the Daredevil? It's like the funny one. It is funny. Daredevil. Yeah. And of course, respecting the chef, I have to do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but OK, that, I'm honored, by the Thank way. Thank you. I, people don't have to main as me, as I. but I'm honored when it happens to me. It's like a, a good primer he's a good starter yeah. for people because the other guys are so hard yeah, yeah. yeah I know. well it's fun yeah. he's a I, I'm he's, uh, the most, he's the most versatile yeah he's even a healer guys uh-huh. come on no I really I just I really love playing him and uh-huh. he's one of my uh, Jack Morrison's a good guy the, I know are the best these punks to get off my lawn <laughs> yeah no he's a yeah he we based a lot of he was a he's a really uh, really been a special character. Um, but one thing I thought, um, one thing I really loved about Overwatch in general was that like how progressive they were I know. As, as regards to like mainstream media. They weren't afraid to say, "Hey, this girl Tracer, she's a lesbian." Yeah. And they, despite what a lot of like outdated and jaded thinking were, they're like, "No, we're staying true to this." And I thought that was really ballsy, but it was right. really good. And yeah. one thing I even loved more was that like I was like, "Oh my god, my main." He, he's, uh, he's he's gay and that's that's awesome. Luis, yeah. And like, how, I just want to ask, how does that make you feel as the voice actor, just to find out that you, not only are you a, a positive role in the game community, but also now in the LGBT community. Yes, to find out that you're gay is a show. Hey, you know, like, <laughs> no, it's and I'll tell you, Luis, it, it's uh, it's first of all, it's awesome. Number one, it's in finding out even through it was. It's such an interesting thing because I did not know, obviously. Well, not obviously. Sometimes you don't know the backstory. I made up a backstory for him. He has a backstory in the comic books. Would you be able to tell us his backstory? No, no. I, I mean, uh, there are. The, what Michael, too, has written, you know, okay, in terms okay. of from Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana. <laughs> you know, he had a wife. He had, you know, he's been, no, we, we have this story to him. Uh-huh. I mean, I call him really bisexual, really, because he would be into either, you know, because uh-huh. he did have love interests, yes. you know, and people were talking about Anna being love love interest that was, that yeah. was hinted and- absolutely and here's the deal is is he just loves but what was fascinating to me not only finding out this late game like what that's about is how little it changes who he is yeah like what i love about it is he is not putting that first you know it's not the stereotypical it's like no if you want and wait, make an older white guy, soldier, gritty soldier, Clint Eastwood-esque yeah. type guy, and you find out he's in the community? And he's, wow. he's a badass. Wow, he's a badass. He's a badass, but not only that, like, like, he, and, and if you know the story with, um, you know, uh, Victor, like his, the love interest, none of it ever works out for him. This is the sad tragedy of Jack Morrison, uh-huh. is that it's like, even though that whatever his choices are, it doesn't matter because he's just dedicated to the job and like it always ends kind of sadly for him yeah. I would like him to have a happy life you know what I mean because he has been betrayed by yeah. by everything lost everything and even just a little glimmer of hope of, of love for anybody you know and he has that but then it kind of he's got to stick he's got to stay true to solving this problem you know of what happened with Overwatch yeah and and he's dedicated to not just helping his soldiers, but now he's helping the world. Mm-hmm. He's actually anybody who's dispossessed. And so I just think it was fascinating to find this out so late in the game and realize it doesn't really change yeah. him. It's it, really who he is. It and it just makes him that much more interesting. Yeah. And I love it. If you can be inclusive in any way, you know, Symmetra being whatever, whoever's on the spectrum or whatever's happening, you know, whoever's, it's so great to like, go even further with it and that's I tell you the, the comics the, the, the graphic novels I just love them yeah, was, they're so good in the movies yeah. not only the games but the short they, movies I, I, um, I was talking to Anji uh, yeah yeah and we both kind of agreed you guys just need to well not you guys but like the Blizzard just needs to make a movie oh yeah your lips to God's ears or to Overwatch yeah. uh, to, to Blizzard's ears let's call that <laughs> uh, it's just uh, we'd, I would love it even if it were just the anthologies of just these different shorts yeah. tied together 
and kept their wonderful animation. I wouldn't want to, I mean, the, you, know, you can always go live action, yeah. but why keep not? Like keep it like the style that the, it the is. The one, it has like no dialogue, but that one just got... Uh, that's that's my favorite. I gotta tell you, it's one of, that to me is Sundance yeah. material. That film, with the, just that yeah. is the robot. It just, that is a, that's a standalone film. It's so beautiful. It makes me just get going and cry. I, I could sit and talk about Overwatch to you all day, but I wanted. <laughs> well, you're more than welcome to, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but I would like to talk I a little. Can't bit say about enough good things about it. Um, so you've also been the Hulk for some time. Yes, I have to answer you as the Hulk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is such an iconic character yes. to play as. He's gone through so many different iterations. I know. Time and time again, and even when you see the Hulk, he like. He's not the same like Hawk Smash. There's more to No, it. yeah. And you have, obviously you have such a great connection with Marvel. Yeah, I love uh, them. Would you go more into this? Like Absolutely. This? And then, you know, I, I, yeah, what, a, what an amazing thing to be part of. Understand that I was a fan of Marvel and DC growing up. And I was a fan of that character. Uh, even, you know, the TV show. Lou, you know, at the, I thought it's not Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and uh, I just loved Banner and Hulk. I just loved what they, what they did with it. And to play that iconic character was just a real, and for this long, is a dream come true. I'm that nine-year-old boy just going, I can't believe this. And so when that happens, you know, there were hulks before, there will be hulks, people playing after me, before me, you know, they're always hulks, but, uh, or now, you know, but you, but you, you, when you get that, it's a responsibility. You really want to honor that character and give it as much depth. Obviously, the writers and directors are telling you, here's how he is. And so I've been lucky to be in those green feet through many iterations, like when he was just a Savage Hulk, you know, or Banner. And I've been Banner half the time, you know, like depending on what kind of Banner they want. But uh, and they're all been good. All the Banners have been amazing, you know, um, but like uh, it's fun to play off of them, too. Um, you know, so you start off as the Savage Hulk, and then by the by the next show, he's more Earth's Mightiest Heroes. He's like a reluctant team member. You know, so we got Hulk versus is like a scary Hulk who like you don't know where it's gonna go. And then Earth's Mightiest Heroes, he's kind of like, yeah, maybe leave me alone. What people don't realize is Hulk wants to be left alone. Uh -huh. That's Lou Ferrigno and I do I did a panel together uh -huh. as Hulks, and it was like that. We <laughs> he said we both agreed that he's not just angry. He's just like, please stop the noise, uh -huh. everything, you know. And so uh, he by then, then of course, the next iterations either are the funny Hulks, where he's kind of the comic relief, uh -huh. or he's like. Uh, or like Hulk and the Agents of Smash, where he's like a father figure, and he's, I call him Zen Hulk, where he's like helping other Hulks help their anger. And, and, and as the comics go, he gets smarter, or he fuses with Banner. He gets back to being, pretty much by the end of his life, he's building stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's a smart Hulk, you know? So, it, and unfortunately, the Hulk thing, gamma radiation affects everybody a little different. Like, She-Hulk's fine, right? Uh, you know, it makes you an exaggerated version of what you are many times, you yeah. know what I mean? So if you're a jerk, you're just a massive jerk, you know, whereas Hulk Banner's a good guy. And uh -huh. so Hulk, you know, with the exception of some comic, you know, books that kind of made him more scary, he's pretty much a good, he's a good dude. And yeah. um, um, it's been such a deep, deep connection to be able to play this thing for so long. It's very, I just, I love it. Uh, I love playing him anytime. <laughs> you know, it's uh, just the best. I've also saw that you've done um, a few like live action, live action stuff, like uh, Shazam, a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, I do a lot of uh, movies. So uh, can you talk about some of the movies you've done? Oh sure, sure. Uh, a lot of scary movies. <laughs> Annabelle, uh, and, uh, uh, Dead Silence, uh, a lot of the Alien Predator Predator movies. Really? You know, okay. but uh, um, well, and then for Disney, you know, animated movies. But like you, you were referring to Shazam. Now that. Goldar and the, and the putties, the, that was such a crazy, uh, fun movie to work on. Um, these guys were just endless, these creatures that were like the army. And then, of course, Goldar, who was like the huge thing. And yeah, that's fun because you, 
depending on what the project is for that particular one they had a lot of stuff flushed out uh -huh. and then I am watching the movie and trying to fill in every kind of personality that I can wow. for those characters yeah okay yeah that sounds really uh, that sounds like a fun task it's a fun task that movie it was a lot because there's a lot of creatures oh yeah yeah so I had to do each one <laughs> usually we have a team of us we had to do like so this was this was uh, this was uh, heavy lifting but it was well worth it I just loved what they did and how long have you been in this industry? Because you have quite the resume under your belt. Well, World War II. I started after... <laughs> let me tell you, it's my birthday today, you know. Uh, but birthday. Thank you. No, uh, um, uh, when did I start? Well, I, I've always been into doing it. I think officially as a job mm -hmm. was like the mid to late 90s. Okay. Uh, I did ADR. I did looping for Gladiator. That was my first big movie. So nice. if you watch Gladiator and you watch and you hear, you will be fighting for the emperor. Do not turn your back on him. Or <laughs> for we who are about to die, we salute you. Those guys. <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. That's, that's really that cool. was fun. <laughs> it was a blast. Wow. Yeah. But a lot of those things, yeah, a lot of a lot of Star Trek movies, uh, Star Wars. I get to do a lot of aliens for them, which I love working for them. Uh, the Star Wars movies, we've had so much fun uh, coming up with, uh, again, more iconic characters. Uh, uh, you know, watch out, Captain, look out, you know, those kinds uh, of things. Or... Um, there's some aliens in the last movie or not the the, what, the the last Star Wars movie where there was like I thought they would have done treatment on it and it's like no they actually have me go what are you you know I was like that was him I'm like you didn't do anything to that <laughs> yeah it was fun <laughs> well what? And uh, <laughs> and Vader sometimes. There's many of us that do Vader. Uh -huh. I do do Vader if you go to Disneyland and you meet Darth Vader. Really? That's, yes. That's that me. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird for me to go and, and meet myself because I'm my own worst critic. And at first I was like, oh no, I hope this doesn't. Does that sound like me? Is that, is that like him? And then again, you know, when I meeting the guy in the outfit, I was just like immediately. Wanted, I fell into like, yes, my lord. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's intimidating as heck. Have you ever like talked to Vader in your own Vader voice? Like, no. I, I did not. I didn't want to confuse. <laughs> I didn't want to be weird. I was actually kind of. I knew what to tell him though because uh, we wrote. We did like a hundred lines, and uh, so you start to know what to say to uh -huh. get him to say something else. And oh really? So what did I do? I, I, I had my wife with me. I said, "My lord, I found the rebel spy," and I, I threw her to him, and he's like, "Good. See to it that she no longer does what she does." It was like it was this whole thing. That is. Wow. So Set her up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know there's a lot you can and cannot talk about. I know. So if you if you can't talk about this, please stop me. Um, okay. Are you? Nope. <laughs> I can't. I tell you what. <laughs> no, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Go ahead. Don't worry about it. Are you working on the new Avengers game? Um, <sighs> Okay, you know, just pretend like whatever. I'll tell you what, man. If they ask me, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for like any like animation to something, what is like one character or like franchise that you've done that's really stuck out to you? And you're like, man, I can't. I still can't believe I've done this. Because I know you have a very sweet spot for the Hulk. Yeah. Like other I, anything I've done for Star Wars, Star Trek, or. Marvel or DC, I pinch myself. Okay, I go, oh my gosh, I get to do this. You know that that I'm so thrilled. So those those stand out to me. Um, characters. Then there are certain characters. Like if we're talking about games, yeah. I was so honored to do Zeratul for StarCraft II. That was originally an actor named Jack Ritchell, who was fantastic, and he was in Star for StarCraft. And sadly, he passed on to the next place, and I took over, and he gave me big claws to fill. And that was a big honor because there was so much drama, there was so much theater in that character that I could do, I could do, and that was great. Soldier seventy six is another one where it's like, wow, I will go to Birmingham, Alabama, or Birmingham, England, and it'll be the same fans. You know what I mean? The people know this worldwide, and they're getting that, and that's been really. Uh, you know, that was really special. And then anytime I get to do any kind of comedy, I'm, I'm always up for that. But, but, but yeah, but you're talking about like anything that makes me yeah. go, yeah, I'm always, I'm always geeking out on anything Star Wars or anything like that. I just go, wait a minute, we're doing this. I sometimes <laughs> look at the other guys, I'm like, we're doing, you know. Um, right now, you know, I'm, um, 
working on Looney Tunes. And so I'll play Yosemite Sam and, you know, and, uh, and, and, and Tasmanian devil and all these guys I grew up with. We sit in a room, you know, one of the incarnations of, of the Looney Tunes shows. And, you know, I'm sitting here with Daffy and Porky and we're looking at each other like, this is so weird. <laughs> like pinch myself. Are we doing this? You know, like it, it's, uh-huh. it's cause these are things that we grew up with. And again, you want to honor what yes. you, so those are traditions you're keeping alive. Then it's nice. I like the other flip side of like, let's create something totally new. And that's, that's exciting when that happens, when you get to do that, you know? Well, um, you, you reminded me of something I wanted to ask. Sure. I just kind of got lost in our conversation. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, for DC work, what characters have you done? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Sol- Solomon Grundy. Bane. Killer Croc. Uh, uh, b- 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 Swamp any, Thing. Were any of these in like uh, the Batman Arkham series or... Yes. Okay. Yeah, those are the Arkham series, and then Swamp Thing was in some other uh, incarnation, other other um, game. Uh, yeah, the Arkham games. Oh my gosh, those were really those go deep. Yeah. That was amazing. I remember um, playing it as a kid, and I first thought of it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm I scare like, you. <laughs> it, just, it, it wasn't what I was expecting. I no. just instinctively got hooked on it. it just, I know. Um, if it's not from uh, Kevin. And I'm trying to play Kevin him. Michael Richardson? Yeah, the Batman. Oh, Kevin um, uh, Conroy. Kevin Conroy. No. Mark Hamill. It's a I know. It's a, I'm just... Kevin Conroy and, and Mark Hamill. Come on, let's give it up for them, yeah. right? I mean, he is forever that. I and, mean, we're all clapping, calling our clapping. I mean, and and he really is that guy. And it's so great. And, and what a sweet guy, too. And, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, you know, Mark Hamill, you know, I, I know he's known... I always joke with him. I say, you know, you're this amazing voice actor that happened to be Luke Skywalker. <laughs> now he's Master Skywalker. It's all, but he really was known for this thing. But he has the most illustrious. Like he's got the range. Like yeah. you can't believe. And his Joker is it's just, scary. you know, I just like it. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, um, yeah. To then to be playing uh, Bane. You know, we took a sort of a traditional. I took the, sort of the comic book version of Bane. I was yes. I was taking it from this point of view. You know, I much. I was like, you know, there's different ones, and I've liked all incarnations of it. But I, I wanted him to be from there. You know, a Latin American. Did, you know, did, uh, country. When working on like any video games like this, or when you're working with uh, with Mark, you're working with Kevin. Mm-hmm. Um, does it ever just hit you like, man? I'm like, these are like. Like legends. Yes, like- all the time. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now, sadly, in video games, I get that more when I work on the shows with them because we're in the same room. Okay. When we do, unless it's a cut scene or a cinema scene um, that helps the narrative, generally we're recorded on our own. Okay. And so I never get to be, I, I'll see Mark or somebody on, uh, coming in. Uh-huh. You know, and you go, wow, but I, I'm not working with him unless he's okay. on the show. Then when he's on the show, I work with him. But like uh, in the games, we generally are solo recorded. The reason for that is they have to cut, as you know, all these lines have to cut together with another separate line. So if if things just tie together linearly, they don't work. Um, They have to exist well on their own. One of the big differences with video game acting is it's 10 different endings. You know? Yeah. So if you're the wizard and we're friends, it'll be this scene. If we're enemies, it'll be a different kind of... There are some games, early Gears of War, I knew how you were playing depending on how people responded to my character Baird. You know, because they're like, you were a real jerk. I'm like, you shot me, didn't you? You (laughs) shot me by accident, didn't you? You know, know, as opposed to like, oh, man, you were great. Uh Like, oh, yeah, we were working together, huh? You know, (laughs) he's another one I've just loved being with for so long. I was going to mention that. I was going to ask you a little bit more if you could go into Gears, because I pretty much grew up on that franchise. Um, Oh, yeah. I just remember I I didn't like Baird at first. Nobody did. (laughs) It was a pain in the butt. But then, like, the more I played the game, I was like, He's more, he's more of like a smart aleck. He's a smart aleck. Really quippy. And yeah. Growing up as an angsty teenager, I had that personality. Yes. And I was like, man, I relate to him. I like him. You were supposed to. Yeah, that was what it was. And so, how, how does it feel knowing that you've been part of this franchise? It's been around 
fairly recently still, yeah. and it's still running strong. And yeah. I believe uh, it's been a while since I played Gears Four, but I believe Baird is still very well and alive. Right? He's around, yeah, yeah, and and and, and uh, from that last one. And uh, the thing now, I'm talking like him. I got to get into it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's yeah he started off as like kind of comic relief, the sort of the smart ass. Mm -hmm. They needed that, and then it was great when you found out why he became that way. Yes. And that was the whole backstory to him that he sometimes prefers his robots to people. And he's one of those guys who really knows how to do stuff and fix stuff and not necessarily the best social guy. You know, he's one of those. And what you find out, though, is that he has this really big heart, yeah. you know, and and he's just he's just demonstrating tough love everywhere. Yeah. That's what he was. He's like that annoying big brother, yeah, you know, to kind of piggyback off that, like one of the like. Uh, pivotal parts of that was uh, in Gears 4 when you find out he's been spying on you the whole time. Yes. But it was me. <laughs> yeah. You, you, how did you think that happened? Did you think that I did, magically the thing appeared? No. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, he's, like you said, he's such a dynamic character. Yeah. There's more and more layers to him. There's like an onion. The more you feel exactly. It. And, it, and if he heard us talking about that, he'd be like, oh, come on, fuck, please. <laughs> There's not much to me. And there is. No, he's a, yeah, and he's a, he's a really, again, this is what is great about acting in these games. Same with if you have a long running show. You really get to know that character. Yes. You've only been with him, not only through his backstory, but for many years. And then you also know how he is in different situations. Uh -huh. How he's gonna die, how he's gonna live, how he's gonna, you know, like, meaning there's so many iterations of like, how he falls in love, how he falls out of love, how he, you know, like you, you've learned so much more than you would even in a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I mean, I've been, a, I've been an avid, uh, believe to subscribe to that video games are basically movies at this they point. are they're They've big been this way for a very long time yes and I think uh, to kind of like that that what helped me believe that was playing Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid game Metal Gear Solid yeah wow talk yeah. about yeah. talk about depth yeah I mean, I didn't even understand. I, I was in that and I didn't know what I what, uh, what was happening. I'm the the uh, the the uh, print mantis demon. No way. Yes, that's me. And oh I didn't God. understand. I mean, it took me so long to because imagine, you know, imagine what this is about when you have a raven, a wolf, you know, octopus. Uh -huh. Right. And these are all responses. You find out like, OK, so what are, what am I doing? And I'm controlling you. Uh huh. And I'm empty inside. I just want I you to know, yeah. you, uh, you are personally responsible for giving me nightmares. I, uh, <laughs> again, I am sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Saren too, Mass uh, Effect. That was another one people are like, people were another one like, you gave me a lot of nightmares. I'm like, well, he was supposed to be a good guy, but he was, uh, <laughs> but no, that was a really weird, but Metal Gear Solid was a really weird one because it wasn't, I didn't, I was trying to understand the context. Mm. And then when you find out it's all responses to war, uh -huh. or it's all like, you Everything's know. It's a metaphor for something. Exactly. It's a metaphor. I was like, oh, this is poetry. Yeah. This is getting deep, you know? And I didn't know that. I feel like when I started out, I'm like, I'm just a bad guy, right? And, uh, and that's something <laughs> I, I, um, I, I genuinely, like, I really appreciate about video games is that, like, they serve us so much more. I just remember as a kid, like, just, um, I would just play video games. Yeah. And I would just enjoy it. And, and, it was just, it's, it's a form of art. It and is. It's, uh, video games have also, like, they've helped so many individuals. I just remember like, I playing hope so. Metal Gear Solid and I was just shedding tears. Yeah. And we're playing Mass Effect. I'm just like, oh my God, it's... like, what decision do I make? And, like, I feel like what I have is going to, uh, like, affect me in the real world. But it's just, like, you just get so immersed and lost in this world. And a lot of it has to do with the team behind of the graphics, the marketing. Oh, it's everybody. But uh, I see, like, a big part, too, is um, it's, like, you, you can have like you can have a production, but it's nothing without the actors. And it's a big part of it is goes to you guys because you guys are what bring it to life. You you give it this this soulful experience that you wouldn't be able to experience otherwise. Thank you, and that's and that's well, and, and then again, then it's the writers giving us those words, yeah. and I call it like, and it's the the animation. It's every every part. The acting is one component, but like to have one character is like so many people, yeah. not just me, but like you know. Then you've got mocap, which I like to do, you know. So you got like motion capture, video capture, facial capture. You've got so much goes into these characters, and. Um, 
it's a team effort. And I always like to joke about it. It's called, I call it writing in fourth dimensions because this line has to hook up with this line over here. And it's so hard, you know, because yeah. all depending on how you play. So these things have to have continuity like you can't believe. Yeah. Uh, and it's... Um, it's and then like for example something like gears or starcraft those are heavy science fiction those are books okay those are things that are so involved and intricate that like I wouldn't even know, or, or Call of Duty. Oh. Like, God, try to figure that. You know, start, it's, I, I, I play Maxis, so I know the exposition. I, I know what it is, because I've had to tell everybody what it is as the character. But it's so involved and so deep. And then you have something like Overwatch, right? It's got a backstory, but it's so fan-driven. Yeah. So Michael Chu's writing these great stories, right? But like, uh, someone says, hey, you know what, I see, uh, Soldier is kind of like a dad guy, and this becomes a joke. Yeah, and well, became- I embrace, I sign Dad 76, man. <laughs> you know, because you embrace it. Yeah. Because that's fan driven. And then they say, well, we want to concentrate on whoever, Zarya or whoever. Let's write a story about that. And, you know, and it's like, it, 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 it switches, um, it switches around. But like you're saying, uh, it, 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 so much is involved in the, and it is interactive art, it's yeah. cinema. And uh, bigger than that, what I realized, too, is that you, at least as a player, you've had my character or someone else's character in your house for a week, you know, maybe a month, playing something. You're living this out like the holodeck. You're living this thing out. You have a, it has a big impact on your life experience. And that's why I'm really glad when I hear, man, you got me through a hard time or I don't, I was having a terrible time at home and this character stood for something that made me feel stronger. That is the best thing you can hear, you know? Yeah. I mean, we could go on and talking, Dane. I can make a whole show just talking about you. <laughs> um, but I, I would like to cut this interview right now. You got it. Thank you for everything you've done today. This, thank you. This interview is over. No, <laughs> Luis, wonderful talking to you and great, great interview. Thank you so much. Mike interview. Thank you so much. Mike interview. Thank you so much. Mike interview. Thank you so much.